Hey guys, so today we're going to see how we can scrape hotel listings from booking.com using uh, beautiful soup and Python. Okay. Uh, and uh, so this is booking.com. So let's go somewhere. Um, I'm going to type in New York. Okay. Let's say New York is where I want to go. And I want to go between the 25th to whatever and I search so we get to the search page and here we go let's see if we can scrape this data all right I'm just gonna copy this and I have a boilerplate code here that uh, I'm just gonna explain this to you because I'm not gonna sit and type all of that um, so basically what we're doing is we are importing beautiful soup using the beautiful soup for library install if you don't have it import requests which is a part of python you don't need to install it in the headers we are making sure we pass a user agent string to tell booking that we are a browser otherwise uh, the server of booking.com will reject your request most probably and what we do is we use the request module to get the data we pass the headers as well so get the url and the response object is then passed to the beautiful super uh, function and asked to convert it to an xml file and the soup object contains something that we can now query very 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 easily so now let's see what you can query okay um here we go so let's see let's take any of these things and looks like i missed it it says that's amazing how quickly i missed it tricky isn't it booking.com is very tricky <laughs> so anyway so what we'll do is we will so first thing I'll do is try, when I try to scrape something like this, I always try and scrape, divide the HTML itself into multiple objects. I don't try to directly scrape like the headline or the title of this. That's a bad idea generally. You want to divide this complex HTML into pieces which you can manage. Otherwise, what if you have one data here and that's not there here? So what happens is you will skip it and you will mismatch the title with the next item. So there's all these problems that will happen. I like to think of this particular HTML as about 30 HTML. So these pieces of HTML is what I want now. Okay, and I want to then ignore everything else. So I want to get to what makes this piece, this piece, right? So this one particular entire block. And in this case, it's so simple to see. So you just right click and then inspect and see where it goes. Okay. And so that's, that's just the, the photo. So that seems to be a decent sized so let's collapse that division and see yep so if you see that entire division moves up right so it keeps moving up and down so there this division here is the holy grail that means if we can get this we get the entire hotel so in fact it is divided by hotel ids which is very good for us okay so here i want to find something which i can divide this by so the most meaningful thing for me is seems to be sr property block sr search results i think it means underscore property underscore block right i think that's the one that i should take everything and divide by that's my hunch right now i can always change the hunch later so uh, but i'm just going to go with this i'm just going to copy that so take that one so this whole division is as many classes that define it but this one makes the most sense to me i'm just going to copy that come bring it here keep it there <laughs> and then call the soup.select function which can allow us to use the jquery selector so we can do dot for class or hash for ids or just call for example h2 tags or a div tag here or whatever we want to do in this case, we're going to use a dot operator, which means the class name. That's the short for it. Dot means class name. Okay, anything with the class name is a property block I'm interested in, but this will always give me an array. You'll have to remember that. Okay, so because there will be multiple SR property blocks, thank God it gives us an array. It's very good, but then we have to process that array. So I'm just going to go for each of that array. So for each in Python goes like this for item in, like so. And then I'm going to print that item. Uh, print the item to see if we have actually I'm put a separator between them because there'll be a lot of gibberish. I can tell you that much. Uh, it's just HTML. 
and let's name it as um, a scraper booking listings dot py okay scraping is not scraping let's make it i'll just call it booking listings because we're scraping dot py okay and let's run it here okay python 3 booking listings dot py running it yep so you can see the divider between things so it's dividing something and so yeah there's some division that's going on i feel a bit confident now so you can see this are let's see if we can find that class our property block we found it okay so it's taken the entire division and given it to us in an array here with array items being item okay isn't that amazing now we can just we just have a query inside of this and our data is lying around here okay so what do we want let's see what we want I think we should just get the name first, isn't it? So let's see Arlo Soho. What is where is it exactly? Aha, uh -huh. it's pretty simple. SR hotel name is all we need to get. I think that's a direct target for me. I'm not even gonna bother looking at any other technique here. I'm just gonna just try and copy that. Oh god. How am I ever gonna do this? And I don't know if I copied it even. So let me take that there. And now let me try and extract this item. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll put all of this in a try catch, try accept block. Okay. Otherwise, I've seen these things have issues because, of course, everything has a name. But if there is no name found, we don't even want it, right? We want to just skip it. So we'll use a try accept technique to. I think it's exception, right? As you I think. And then just print a dummy space so that we just trick it. Now, what we do is we are safe, right? And sometimes what happens is the block SR property block might be used for other things other than just listing uh, by lazy coders, you know, uh, listing particular. Uh, actual hotel names, uh, actual hotel details. So then you don't want that coming in and breaking your code. So we gotta be careful there. So what we do is we just now go and say soup. Uh, sorry, not soup because now that's the address in the entire HTML. So we'll call it item. So this is the beauty of it. And then inside that item, select for us anything which has a class SR hotel name. Boom dot hr because it's class name remember this gives an array so we we have to get the first element of the array always going to be um and then we go to get text because there's only one element anyway there. let's just print this and see what happens print and in this we don't want this gibberish anymore to block that and then let's see if we can print the hotel names Give it this in error here. Okay, I forgot to put that and close that in single quotes. Here we go. Yep, did it. All the hotel names. Okay, so now let's uh, let's continue being on a roll here. All right. Um, let's see what we can do to get the other details of the hotel. Uh, Okay. SR card address line. We need the address. Um, before that, can we get the number of reviews? Let's see. I think this one, this one I'm interested in, right? So we need to know what the reviews are. I think that's a crucial piece of information. So we're just going to go jump there for a second. And it has a beautiful, convenient class for us, which is view review score badge let's get that All right and let's see if we can use that here so gonna keep it here i think i have a feeling we need to copy this multiple times just sort of get a bunch of data inside let's just do that so let's get the review badge that will give us the rating i think what about the review score content there you go title yeah excellent that one we need that wordy thingy and let's use that why not 
all right so whatever that is so it will give us whether it's excellent or poor or sad as uh, yeah, it's trying its very best or whatever and then let's get the reviews uh, let's see if we can get the reviews yeah reviews got text and then let's get the prize isn't it oops we don't get the prize what are we here for prize display value here we go i think that will do the trick Okay, maybe I should just stop here. You, you're getting the hang of this, isn't it? What else can we get? What else can we get? All this, all this we can get. Definitely can. Let's see. Um, what else we got here? Maybe we can see if we can get this 250. It's a just line item. Can we get that? Is that what it is? Yep, yep. Uh, this line dot separator. Yeah. It's a line item. I don't think we want the line item. I think we want the whole thing, isn't it? Let's see if there's something which contains this whole thing. So we can just get all this text together. Yeah, that's the one, I think. Just line. That makes more sense to me. You can always parse it using many string manipulation techniques later. But for now, let's see if we can run this. What do we got? All right, so we got the name. It's a little all over the place, but then here we go. We got the name. We got the price. We got the address. And the address is a bit all over the place. We can take that. And we got the price. We got the number of reviews and we got um, the rating as well and the good and all that we're getting that see that review score whenever there's no good it just sort of defaults to review score i think right so it looks like a little all over the place that's because we can just sort of put a strip command here if that's the case so that's because it has some sort of line feed and tabs and all that at the ends of it so we'll just put a strip everywhere so that it strips it off all of that and then run it again should be a little bit more decent yep at least the main ones and then there is this whole bunch of stuff over here which uh, which is the address part of it right which is a little haphazard but if you look at it it's pretty good isn't it these pieces of data so that's how you scrape whatever it is that you want from here and um, what about what about image do you want to do that let's do that yep hotel image and let's see let's get the hotel image here okay this is slightly different from that's why i wanted to show you this print item dot hotel image now what happens here is get text won't work because we don't need the text we don't need to strip it we'll just pause here for a second now what happens the hotel image that you need is where is the url we need to pull the url out of it right but the url there is no src image typically has src and it has src but we can okay we'll make it a little bit more challenging how about we get the data high res not just the src because that's a small one i think there's a link to the high resolution version of it if i'm not mistaken and let's get that isn't it so let's get the attribute rather than getting the attribute regularly which is src we'll get the hotel image and try and get the attribute of that which will be um data high res so here's what we have to do we have to open that as an associative call like that and call it data high res okay because hotel image and then the first hotel image and then the data high res of that okay Here we go. let's see if it prints a link to it it of course won't print the image here there you go that's it got it so that's how we do it guys so simple so much fun uh, 
And the only worry is that booking.com, if you keep calling us in any speed, uh, we'll keep getting blocked. I'm always worried, well, even when I'm doing it, I'm on like this, uh, that I'll get blocked. And if you do get blocked, one of the reasons is because the user agent string is pretty obvious. It doesn't change somehow. And it's too fast for somebody human on a browser to be doing that. So you need to rotate it. There's an article which explains how to rotate UA strings, user agent strings, uh, with the video as well. So please have a look at it. I'll put a link to that in the description. And uh, once you do that, uh, then you'll know how to do that. There's code as well. You can just really use that code. Um, the other thing is you may want to actually rotate your IP address because the IP address eventually will get you banned no matter what you do. So there's a solution for that to rotate IP addresses using a rotating proxy service. And I run one such thing. So let me just pitch that to you. Um, you just, instead of calling booking, you're going to call you're going to pass the booking.com URL here to my API endpoint and you're just calling calling the API endpoint and with an API key in your request command, right? So you don't call it directly, you call it through me. I'll pass it to a pool of 2 million plus residential proxies, which means you'll probably never, never really get blocked and you will get literally any, any web page uh, because we automatically do the proxy rotation. We do browser identity rotation for you. We handle sessions, cookies, all sorts of other techniques that you need to do and headers you need to send and uh, just timings, everything, uh, all controllable. Uh, we also do multiple retries, so you won't even know if there is a particular proxy which is not working for some reason. Sol captures automatically behind the scenes. We also render web pages, so in case there's data behind an Ajax script, we wait for it to render it. We actually have headless browsers that we use to render that data and get you that data. So even, even hard to get data like that can be gotten. 1000 API calls, completely free per month, no credit card required. You can sign up right now and get an API key and start making making calls. So that's how you do it. Even if you, you know, uh, I hope you enjoyed it even otherwise. Um, thank you.